In today's world, automation is all around you. The moving assembly line allows cars to be made quickly and affordably. Today, you can buy a car straight from the factory with your choice of several colors and with many options like backup cameras, built-in navigation systems, and heated leather seats. The assembly lines now use automated machines to perform some tasks along with human workers. The machines help with doing repetitive processes controlled by the employees. For example, the machine might paint the car, but the employee will decide to load the paint color of red, blue, or white. In computer software, we also have assembly lines called wizards. A wizard will ask you a series of questions until you get to the finish button. Often a wizard will get you most of the way to your end result. It gets most of the tedious work out of the way. Once you get the report project back from the wizard, you can tweak the final results. Let's take a look at the data that we want the wizard to automate into a report for us. I've run the reset script and jproco is set up, and the table that's going to drive most of the data that we're pulling from is the bookings table. It has 800 records and dates ranging from 2006 all the way to 2013. Now, we're not interested in all of these records. We're going to look at the data from 2007. So we'll say where the year for the booking date, which is this field right here, is equal to 2007. And we get 101 rows. Look at this first record. 18 guests booked a trip. That means we collected 18 times what amount? Well, there's no price field in here. Well, we can join to another table to get that. All we need to do is type enter join from the current products table, and we'll alias that as P, and they relate on the product ID field. Run this query, and we can see over here exactly what the retail price is and exactly how many were ordered because we joined these two tables. Well, let's make an expression field that shows us exactly what each line item is worth. That is the number of guests times the retail price. And let's alias that field as total sales. All right, this first record was worth how much? $1,891.062. So I don't have to scroll all the way to the right. Let's put this expression field first. There we go. Now we can see this field first and all of the other fields after it. It looks like there's some pretty good sales in 2007. What's the total for 2007? Well, if we get rid of this select star and just have our expression field, we can see all of the individual totals, and now we can put an aggregate function called sum around the expression field. Run that, and the total for the year was $351,830.6804. What was the total for January of 2007? Well, we can say and month for the booking date is equal to 1, which is January. And the total is 27,136. Of that 27,000, how many of those were long-term stay products? Well, we're going to look at the category for long-term stay. And run it. And the total long-term stay for January 2007 was 1640.73. So let's say you're the person with SQL skills getting the data that your company needs. By running this query, you can get the yearly report for 2007. By running this query, you can get the January report for 2007. And by running this query, you can get the long-term stay category of January of 2007. Or by using one query with a join to feed an SSRS report, in a tabular format, you can see the yearly total and all the month totals for that year and all of the category totals for that month. This report shows you the first name and total sales detailed fields and is grouped and stepped by year, month, and category. 
Notice the group fields of year, month, and category all have a plus next to them, making them expandable for a drill down or collapsible for a summary. Our goal will be to create this report on the right by using the wizard and a query that joins these tables. When a waiter or waitress comes to take your order, they usually ask a few questions, like, what would you like to eat? Would you like anything to drink? Can I get you anything before dinner? Will you want dessert? They want you to answer these questions, and this puts you in control of what happens. Most of the work to completing this meal will be done based on how you answer these questions. To you, this is an automated process that involves your participation. When we launch SQL Server Data Tools SSDT from the Start menu under SQL Server 2012, we will select the Report Server Project Wizard as the type of report we want, and we will be guided through the process that will do much of the report setup for us. So, it's time to get started. Let's start SQL Server Data Tools by clicking the Start button, going to All Programs, going to SQL Server 2012, and going to SQL Server Data Tools. We're going to start a new project. From the Business Intelligence section, find Reporting Services and select the Report Server Project Wizard. Make your path into the Joe's to Pros SSRS Companion Files Chapter 3 folder and call this Report Wizard. We could have called it anything, we're just going to name it this. On the welcome screen, click Next. Now, in order to build a report with data, we're going to have to connect to a database. Let's name our source JProco because that's the database we're going to connect to. And instead of typing in the connection string, let's click the Edit button so it can be built for us. We're going to hook to the local host, which is our machine. And we're going to hook to the JProco database on our local host. Let's test the connection. Looks good. Click OK, click OK again, and there's our connection string. Click Next. And we're not going to teach you how to write a long query, but we've prepared it for you. Right here is the Sales by Employee script, which is in the Chapter 3 folder in the Resources folder. Copy and paste all of this code into this query string and click Next. Now, we're going to choose a tabular report and click Next. You might remember that we want the ability to group by year, and then by month, and then by category. And we like to see the details for the first name field and the total sales field. Click Next. We're going to choose this stepped format where the year is in the first column, and then the month, and then the category. And be sure to include the subtotals and enable Drill Down. Now click Next. You can choose any of these color type templates that you want. We're going to choose Slate. Click Next. The deployment folder is going to be changed to Chapter 3. Click Next. And this particular report inside of this Report Wizard project, we're going to call it Employee Sales. Click Finish. Here's the design view of the report. If we click the Preview tab, this will show us exactly what the report is going to look like to an end user. Currently, nothing's come up because this requires us to enter a year of our choosing. We're going to enter 2007 and click View Report. And a familiar number comes up. We saw that earlier in our query. Well, what about the total for January? We'll expand 2007 and here's month 1 through 12. The total for January is seen right here. How about by category? Well, there's the total for January for long-term stay, medium stay, no stay, and overnight stay. Click the plus next to long-term stay, and we see one line item total for Lee. And for medium stay, we see two customers. This is a nice report, but you probably have some ideas on how would you want to improve the look and feel. That's what we're going to do in the next video. 
that was Chapter 3.1, Create a Report with a Report Wizard. Our next item, Chapter 3.2, Spruce Up the Report Wizard Report. Report.